In this exercise, an L4-L5 interbody fusion will be undertaken with the Travios cage. As with other cages, Travios is not a standalone implant, so it requires additional posterior instrumentation. A pedicle screw system should be used. For this exercise, the ClickX system has been chosen. The Travios cages are radio transparent and incorporate three X-ray markers, shown red in the illustrations. The two lateral markers are shorter than the marker in the center. A Travios cage is 27 millimeters wide and 10 millimeters deep. The implants needed are ClickX pedicle screws with a dual core and double thread, ClickX 3D heads. For demonstration purposes, they're colored purple and can be removed. However, for use in patients, they're gold colored and once applied, cannot be removed. ClickX 6 mm rods and ClickX locking caps with an inner 3.5 mm hexagonal screw. The instruments used to open the pedicle are the USS Pedicle Awl and the USS Pedicle Probe with depth markings. First, the pedicle screws are inserted in the usual manner. The hole is started with the pedicle awl and completed with the pedicle probe. The markings show the approximate depth. The length of the pedicle screw needed is measured ensuring at the same time that bone surrounds the pedicle hole. A screw of the appropriate length is inserted using the T-handled hexagonal screwdriver and the holding sleeve. The screw is locked in place. The screw is not fully inserted, leaving a few millimeters between the screw head and the bone. The holding sleeve is then released. The reamer for the click X is now placed over the screw head and the bone is removed. The reamer is angled 25 degrees in all directions. This procedure ensures good clearance of bone to allow the ClickX 3D head to be attached to the pedicle screw. The same procedure is undertaken in the other three pedicles. Care must be taken not to damage the exiting L4 nerve. This is the position of the window for the transforaminal approach. In this exercise, a laminectomy punch is used to prepare the bone and a rongeur to remove the disc. For distraction, a screw distractor is used. Distraction is achieved by pressing the handles together. The end of the distractor can be adjusted to the required position. The tips of the distractor are placed over the click X screws and the appropriate distraction is applied. With the scalpel, a window is cut in the disc.
The disc material is removed using a rongeur. In the clinic, straight and angled curettes and angled bone rasps are available. The use of these instruments is shown, but not included in the exercise. Now the curettes are used to remove disc material. This procedure may be checked under image intensification. With the rasp, cartilaginous layers are removed from the surface of the vertebral end plates until bleeding bone is attained. Bleeding bone is essential for vascular supply to the bone graft. Excessive cleaning must be avoided. It could damage the denser bone layer and weaken the end plates. Before surgery, the appropriate cage height is estimated by comparing the Travios radiographic template with the adjacent intervertebral discs on a lateral radiograph. The cage height is later confirmed by inserting the appropriate trial implant. The cage height ranges from 7 mm to 17 mm in 2 mm increments. For each cage, there is a corresponding trial implant. The trial implant is mounted on the T-handle by pulling back the sleeve. In this exercise, a 15 mm trial implant is inserted into the disc space to verify the cage size. With the segment fully distracted, the trial implant must fit tightly and precisely between the end plates. Using the largest possible cage maximizes segment stability by achieving tension in the longitudinal ligament and the annulus fibrosus. In the clinic, a funnel for cancellous bone and the appropriate impactor are available. The funnel is introduced and the cancellous bone chips or bone substitute are pushed into the disc space using the impactor. For this exercise, tweezers are used. The trial implant may be used to position the cancellous bone chips. The bone chips form a bed for the cage. The implant holder has jaws to grasp the serrated slots on the cage. A cage corresponding to the trial implant is selected. The short jaw of the holder, with three teeth, matches the concave side of the cage. The speed nut on the handle is tightened. In the clinic, the cage is filled with bone graft material as follows. The packing block is opened and the cage is inserted. Then the packing block is closed and the knurled nut is securely tightened. The bone material, or the bone substitute, is introduced and the bone impactor is used to pack the cage. The cage must be filled completely. After ensuring the cage is held correctly, it is inserted into the intervertebral disc. Slight taps on the implant holder may be necessary. The implant holder is removed. An impactor is used to adjust the cage to its correct position. The cage is ideally placed when it's in the anterior half of the vertebral body end plates. Depending on the size of the vertebrae, the anterior rim of the cage will be 6 to 8 millimeters posterior to the anterior edges of the adjacent vertebral bodies. Using the image intensifier, the AP position of the cage is verified in relation to the vertebral bodies. The posterior disc space is filled with additional bone graft material or bone substitute. The distractor is loosened and carefully removed. Using the positioning holder, the ClickX 3D head is attached.
The positioning holder is removed and 3D heads are mounted onto the remaining three pedicle screws. Now the appropriate 6mm titanium rods are inserted into the 3D heads. Because this fusion is across one motion segment, the rods do not have to be contoured. The rod pusher, designed specifically for the Click X and the self-holding cap driver for the Click X locking cap, are used to insert the locking cap into the 3D head. It's important that the holes in the locking cap are aligned with the tabs of the cap driver. The rod pusher is used to hold the rod in place. The locking cap is then fixed to the 3D head by turning the cap driver until resistance is felt. This procedure is repeated for each 3D head. The rod pusher and the hexagonal screwdriver are used to tighten the 3.5 mm hexagonal screw. At this stage it's essential to apply axial compression across the cage. The compression should be parallel to the cage. For this reason a great advantage of the Click X is that the rod can now be loosened in the Click X 3D head while the 3D head remains fixed to the pedicle screw. Applying compression avoids that the anterior portion of the vertebral body opens. The cap driver for the Click X locking cap and the hexagonal 3.5 mm screwdriver are connected to the screw in L4 and the inner 3.5 mm hexagonal screw. The compression forceps is placed on the rod and compression is applied across the Travios cage. The 3.5 mm hexagonal screw is tightened with the T-handled screwdriver. The procedure is carried out on both sides. This technique promotes excellent compression across the Travios cage.